Please give a warm welcome to the very funny Hannibal Burris, everybody. Lakeshore Theater, what's going on? I was out front when I was coming in. This is guy that was walking past, he looked up at the marquee, and he was like, Hannibal Burris, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I say, hey, motherfucker, that's me, and I don't know you either. <laughs> Bet you didn't think that was gonna happen. Sometimes at comedy clubs, they have comment cards and people can write bullshit about the show. And I was doing this one show and I read the comment cards. This lady wrote, we have a much better comedy venue in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's called Snickers. <laughs> so I wrote her back. I said, you may have a good comedy venue there, but after you leave that show, you still live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> I had to fly from Chicago to L.A. one time, and uh, the flight was from Chicago to St. Louis, then St. Louis to L.A., and I was checking in on an electronic kiosk, and you could upgrade the first class from the Chicago to St. Louis flight for 45 bucks. So I did it, and it was great. I should have gotten more apple juice, though. <laughs> you get the apple juice in a real glass, it was awesome. I was getting sleepy. About 20 minutes in, it's only like an hour long flight. I started fighting off to sleep. I was like, I don't want to go to sleep. I need to be woke so I can experience the shit out of this. I need to be woke for every moment. I should have drank all the liquor I could have drank because on my connecting flight from St. Louis to LA, I didn't have first class, I had to walk back to 36F and endure the glares of people that saw me on the Chicago to St. Louis flight <laughs> sitting in first class. They looked at me like, yeah, dude, we knew you weren't rich. Hell yeah. <laughs> you didn't even look comfortable in that seat. <laughs> I like that Barack got that job. That's a cool job. <laughs> it's a cool job. I like how he got it. You can't do what he did in real life. <laughs> you're like, to already have a good job, you're like, you know what? I want to take every day off this job while I look for a better job. <laughs> How many days you want off, Barack? Every day for the next two years. <laughs> and guess what? If I don't get this job, I'm still coming back to this job to finish this shit out. You can't do that in real life. You working at Subway? Man, I'm tired of working at Subway. I want to take every day off and see if I can get a job at Queesnos. I heard Queesnos has benefits. They don't. Stay your ass at Subway. Don't burn bridges. Somebody sent me this text the other day said, MLK died in 1965. Obama's our 44th president. 1965 plus 44 equals 2009. Now tell me God didn't have a plan. He didn't. Because God probably doesn't deal in stupid ass coincidences. <laughs> This is not why I got the thousand message package. <laughs> to get dumbass stuff like this. That would be a dumbass plan. God prepping up, you know, 1965. It was 44, that shit would be cool. <laughs> I don't know who he'd be pitching that to. <laughs> would he be running it by somebody? 
Shut up, God. <laughs> hey, shut up. That's dumb as hell. <laughs> That's God's crony. He has people in his circle, but they're honest with him. God doesn't keep yes men around. God was, I need people to keep it real around me. They won't just say, like if I'm doing some whack tracks in the studio, I need y'all to let me know that I'm doing <laughs> whack tracks in the studio. <laughs> Gangster rappers always had their friends with them when they record, they give them props after songs. I wonder if dudes that do commercial jingles, do they have like a crew when they record? Like, they'd be in the booth like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we call the car X, man. Yo, that shit was hot, man. <laughs> You killed that car X man shit. Oh man. Did you freestyle that? Oh, the cadence was off the chain. I like rap videos. Some of them are weird. They have to be continued, but then they never have the second video. I'm always wondering what's gonna happen in the second video. So much suspense. I'm like, yeah, hey, they gonna pour more champagne on these bitches, or <laughs> somebody gonna bring a towel or something. These girls are wet. What's going on? What's gonna happen with his rims? Will his chain keep blinding everybody? That's a rapper's favorite metaphor, man. My chain, when I come in the room, my chain make everybody be like, oh man, is anybody selling sunglasses for really cheap? Like, yeah. This chain is so bright, man. Yeah, it's so crazy. Chain, yeah, man. Chain hurt my retina, man. So... Chain. Would his house get foreclosed on? He obviously overspent on. <laughs> How else would he mismanage his finances? I want to know. Can't just leave the story arc open like that. I need closure. <laughs> I like Lil' Kim. She has explicit lyrics. A few years ago, she had a song where she said, watch how I make a Sprite can disappear in my mouth. And I think that's great. <laughs> Imagine, introduce a Kim to your mom, like, mom, this is Kim. Not only is she a rapper, but she can suck a mean dick, too. <laughs> She's so talented. I think we have a few together I really like her. She's special. We have a real connection. <laughs> Why'd it have to be a Sprite can, though? She must have really had wanted some circumference. You know, in geometry class in high school, I always wondered, why they teach me this pie and circumference stuff? And I got to use it in that dick joke right there. <laughs> So stay in school, y'all. You never know. They're gonna use this stuff. <laughs> Gangster rappers always talk about shooting people and killing, but they still stick the song structure like perfectly. Like, yeah, I will talk about killing more, but that was the 16th bar, and we gotta go to the chorus now. <laughs> I want to be a marketable murderer. <laughs> and you got to have perfect song structs if you want to go out and get all this ringtone money. <laughs> Albums aren't selling that much. <laughs> my name is Hannibal, that's my real name. I was named after a great general that was a military genius, but not too many people know about that, so I'm forever associated with Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> and Silence of the Lambs, it's not even a real dude. Why can't I be Hannibal from the A-Team sometimes? <laughs> he was cool, he hung out with Mr. T, they went on missions and shit. <laughs> All the time I have to have the same conversation with people about my name. So your real name is Hannibal? Yeah, my real name is Hannibal. Like your parents named you Hannibal. <laughs> yeah, my parents named me Hannibal. Hannibal is on your birth certificate. Yeah, Hannibal's on my birth certificate. I want to choke the shit out of you and see how you handle that situation. Like, man, are you choking the shit out of me right now? Yeah, I'm choking the shit out of you right now. Are you using your hands to apply force to my neck? Yeah, I'm using my hands to apply force to your neck. Are you trying to stop the circulation of blood and oxygen to my brain? I know y'all wondering, 
If I was choking the dude, why was he still talking regular? And that's just a choice I made for that bit. We'll deal with it. Women get scared when I introduce myself, like Hannibal Lecter. No. Are you gonna eat me? Uh, no, uh, maybe, uh, no. So I had to make my name sexy. I gave it an apostrophe and a French accent. Is your name Hannibal? No, it's not Hannibal, it's her, Annie Bell. <laughs> her, Annie Bell, now let's go drink wine and look at art. <laughs> that's why I go when I want free wine. Art gallery openings is amazing. I wanna thank all the artists for having your gallery openings and help support my alcohol habit. I'm in that line like I care about the art, man. Your color schemes are excellent. Your attention to detail is second to none. Can I get another glass of Merlot, please? Appreciate it, man. You're the next Picasso. Or whoever your favorite artist is, you're the next that guy. You know, my top three artists is Picasso, the dude that painted the dogs playing poker. And then your third. Where's a good liquor at? Stop holding that. I think drunk drivers should stop hitting shit. Because they messing it up for all the good drunk drivers. That don't smash in the telephone pole. You ever been so drunk and about to drive, you surprised that your passengers still get in the car with you? Like, damn, y'all must really need a ride, huh? You ain't got no cab money, no bus fare, nothing. What are you doing with your life? You must not value your safety at all. Whatever, give me some of that burrito and let's run. My favorite drink is the flaming Dr. Pepper. That's an amazing drink. I'll tell you what it is. You take a glass of beer, a shot of Amaretto, you take a cap full of Bacardi 151, you pour that cap full in the Amaretto, light it on fire, drop it in the beer, chug it, and it tastes Exactly like Dr. Pepper, the shit is magical. <laughs> Three different liquors and it tastes like Dr. Pepper. That shows you how dedicated the guy was that invented that drink. <laughs> he said, man, I want to get messed up. But only if it tastes like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you know how many failed combinations this dude had to go through? That didn't happen on the first try. It took dedication, experimentation, patience. Vodka, gin, grenadine. Damn it! You try scotch. Mm, vodka again. A little beer. Fuck! Honey, you should come up for dinner. No, I'm working on something. What are you working on? I'm working on this magical drink that has three different liquors and it tastes like Dr. Pepper. And it involves fire. <laughs> that even makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. <laughs> and I'm gonna divorce you when I got all this flaming Dr. Pepper money. <laughs> you unsupportive bitch. You never backed up my dreams. I don't trust society at all. Some people trust society too much. Some people will lock their bikes, but they won't lock it to something. They just lock the frame to the tire. Because they're like, who's going to take my bike if they can't ride away with it? Who's going to do that? I will. I'll take your bike and I'll toss it into Lake Michigan. I'll toss it to Lake Michigan or whatever body of water is closest to the city that I'm doing this joke in. Because I don't trust society at all. I live alone, and I lock the bathroom door every time I go to the bathroom. <laughs> because if someone wants to come kill me, it's not going to be while I'm dropping a deuce. I'm not going, I'm not going out like that. I work too hard. <laughs> you can try to shoot through the door, but then there's a weird angle situation.
I like to be prepared for whatever happens in life. That's why for Christmas, I bought myself a set of metal prosthetic arms. Because you never know when you're going to lose an arm, and I want to be prepared for the situation. Metal arms, man. Like, dude, if you lost your arm, you're like, man, I lost my arm. This is horrible. But if I lose arm, like, everybody relax. Hey. Hey. Grab my other arm off the shelf over there. Yeah, my other arm off the shelf right there. Somebody get me a beer. Hey, baby, stop crying. It's going to be all right. And somebody clean this shit up right here. Metal arms! I didn't want flesh color. I got metal arms. Ladies, you haven't had it until you had a doggy style with me smack you on the ass cheeks with some metal arms. That's what your father wants for you. That's what your father wants for you. Anybody else that tells you otherwise is a goddamn hater. You need that person out of your life. I want a cop to pull me over. I got metal arms. So do you know how fast you're going? Um, do you know what my arms are made out of? Officer, you like how I mocked your tone and cadence? Pitch perfect. Metal arms like Jax from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I went to this bar around here. I thought there was a comedy show going on in the back. They didn't have a comedy show. They had Nintendo Wii bowling set up. And it was two girls and a guy playing. The guy asked me to be on his team. We played against the girls, then we lost because of me. He got ready to leave. He was like, all right, see y'all later, ladies. And to me, he was like, hey, man. Step your game up. I was like, nah, dude, you step your life up. Get some real passions. I play a lot of video games. I play Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is a really detailed game. On this game, you could buy clothes and go on dates with video game girls. So I bought an outfit that I thought the video game girl was like. I bought shirt, pants, and shoes, and I picked her up. She was like, that shirt is ugly. So I got out the car and I shot her in the face. <laughs> Don't disrespect me, you video game bitch. You virtual twaddle ninja, and you just shot you in the face. Now the date's over. Cause I'm playing this game for an escape from real life. I don't need your criticism in HD. <laughs> don't be surround sound. What's really hilarious is that you can't kill this girl because she's part of the storyline. So when you shoot her in the face, she's like, you being weird, and she runs away. <laughs> like, I'm being weird? Nah, you're being weird. I just shot you in the face and you didn't die. It's acting like it was annoying. I was at the, the game store, they had Guitar Hero set up, and it was this kid playing, and I, I got on the other guitar to compete against him. This kid's father's hyping him up. Billy, you gonna rock out on this dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, Billy, you gonna kick this guy's ass. Like, dude, chill out, man, your kid's not a real rock star. He has no future in music, he's probably gonna work for the city or something. <laughs> It's not a bad job, you get benefits, a lot of vacation days, but it's not any rock star shit by any means. So I started playing this game. I was a novice, this kid is a pro. He starts rocking out. He's winning. He starts leaning back with the guitar like that. Then this dude turned his back to the screen. And he put the guitar through his legs. So I punched him in the chest. And hit him in the knees with my guitar. Don't fucking showboat on me, kid. Have some class and act like you've been there before. <laughs> this ain't a video game, this is real life. One point for Hannibal. <laughs> my neighborhood's weird, man. I'm pretty sure the crack dealers in my neighborhood are working together with the pawn shops. Because why is there a 24 hour pawn shop in my neighborhood? Regular people don't wake up at four in the morning like, oh, I feel like selling my mark away. 
I just feel like selling something. I want to sell something at 10% of its value. I just feel like selling something. Hey, baby, this TV show sucks. You're right, the show does suck. We should sell the TV. Anybody here do cocaine? I don't do cocaine, but I think people that do cocaine aren't honest about the term they use to say they're gonna do cocaine. Like, people that drink, they say, let's have some drinks. People that smoke weed, they say, let's smoke some weed. People that do cocaine, they say, you wanna go party? <laughs> you wanna go party? You're not partying, you're snorting cocaine. I don't party like that. I party drinking in the corner. <laughs> Text messaging people about how shitty the party is. <laughs> like, yo, this party sucks, yo. And I lean when I text, because when I lean when I text, all my messages come out in italics. <laughs> People always think I'm high all the time. Adam, you look high. You high? You sound high. Are you high? No, I'm not high. I'm just way cooler than you. <laughs> and more relaxed. I got a calmer demeanor. I stopped smoking weed like two years ago after I went to Amsterdam. The weed was so good. I got so high. One day I could speak Dutch. <laughs> Fluent Dutch. I was so high that day I helped substitute teach a third grade geography class. <laughs> Completely in Dutch. They were great kids. Very eager to learn. It was a wonderful experience. <laughs> so I was walking around Amsterdam. I had a few extra euros in my pocket. So I did what anybody did and I bought a white baby. This place had a sale of white babies. I couldn't pass it up. My mother said, never pass up a good white baby sale. And always wear clean underwear. They're very different pieces of advice, but both of them work when you apply them in the proper situation. So I bought the white baby. It's the new status symbol for me and my friends. We buy white babies and we have parties and we dress them up in FUBU and Rockaway. Hey, do you see the jeans on my white baby? My white baby. It's way more stylish than your white baby. You need to step up your white baby shoe game. Your white baby shoes are horrendous. We're trying to get sponsorship for this event. And it's not gonna happen with your white baby shoes and such. <laughs> Comedy's fun, but I really, I really want to be a firefighter. I want to be a firefighter so I can drive the fire SUV. Because I don't know what the fire SUV does when they get to the fire. All right. Yep, that's a fire. <laughs> Confirmed, that is a fire, yep. Yeah. Well, I guess we got to sit here and wait for the fire truck. So they can put some water on that shit, because this is just a Chevy Blazer. <laughs> We do not have a water hose. Those people are gonna burn up until the fire truck gets here. That's sad and unfortunate. What's on the radio? The dude in the fire SUV is just the boss. But it's gotta be pretty easy to direct people when you're dealing with fire. Hey guys, right there, where's that fire? Yeah, I'd like for you to put some water on that shit consistently until there's no more fire. And we're gonna go with the same approach right here. We wanna put water on the fire until there's no more fire. They probably have meetings in the morning. I wanna, guys, I wanna call everybody's attention to the board right here. Hypothetically, if it's fire right here, we wanna put water on the fire until there's no more fire. We're gonna go with a similar strategy right here. Put water on the fire until there's no more fire because that's what we do with goddamn firefighters. I bet they had the same agenda for every meeting, but they just white out the date and write over it and save paper. I was coming out the store early. I just bought some Oreos and some Chips Ahoy. I get outside, it's this guy like, hey, brother, it's my birthday today. And that was the first time in my life without any sarcasm, I could say, what? You want a cookie or something? Because any other time you say that, you being a dick, but I meant it from the heart. How many cookies you want, man? 
You want seven cookies? That's way too many cookies. You're being ridiculous right now. You should get like three or four cookies and get out of my face. Don't try to take advantage of my generosity. I can save money, so instead of paying like big ATM fees, I'll go to like Walgreens, buy something small, then I'll ask for cash back. Lots of people do that, but I'm different because I'll return the item that I just bought. <laughs> With no problem. Like, yeah, these Reese's Pieces, I like to return these. <laughs> Thank you. My receipt is still in your hand, actually. <laughs> My receipt is still in your hand. Man, I wish I was a fly on the wall in that room when those people were talking. That's a saying. I wish I was a fly on the wall in that room. That saying is dumb. You wish you would fly wide so you could be annoying and not understand what's going on at all. Because that's what flies do all day when they're trying not to get killed. They frantically avoid death and they don't understand English. That saying should be, I wish I was someone that those people trusted. so that they'll let me be in a room while they talk about important shit. Because right now, I'm not a part of this circle. There's a lot of homeless people in Chicago. I help out the homeless, but they have to do stuff for the money. I will just give it away. They have to earn. This one guy was like, hey, brother, help me out with some cash. He said, you want to make some money? He said, yeah. I hand him a picture. I say, you see that guy? I want you to kill him. <laughs> he was like, man, this is a picture of me. I was like, yo, shit is weird out here in the streets. My neighborhood has changed so much. This place that was a Mexican restaurant is now a small church. Which is very upsetting to me because I like burritos more than I like Jesus. Because steak burritos are delicious. And they're real. They're like tangible things that exist. You can go get one. It's exciting. Ah. I just moved to New York. I saw Hasidic Jews for the first time when I got to New York. But I didn't know they were Hasidic Jews. I thought they were Amish. <laughs> Until I was on the train, I was like, hey, what's this Amish dude doing with a Blackberry? I saw two of City Jewish guys walk past each other without speaking to one another. I thought that was weird that they didn't speak to one another because if I saw somebody wearing the exact same outfit as me from head to toe, I'd at least stop and say, man, that's a nice hat. You have excellent taste in hats. I admire your facial hair choice also. We should hang out sometime, have some coffee, and talk about coats and sideburns. All right, that was the first half of my set. We're gonna have a brief intermission now. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> we're gonna have three intermissions throughout my set. Go to the bathroom. Break whatever momentum possible. It's too much pressure in comedy, man. People put pressure on comedians before a show. You better be funny. You better be funny, man. I paid my money. You better be funny. Nobody even puts pressure on poets. Nobody goes up to a poet like, hey, man, you better be thought-provoking. You better rhyme a lot, use lots of similes, metaphors, and onomatopoeia. I swear to God, if this poet doesn't use onomatopoeia in his poem, I'm never coming to this coffee shop again. I like sounds a lot. So I have a situation in my apartment right now. I have a surplus of pickle juice in my apartment. 
There's too much pickle juice, because after the pickles are gone, I don't like throwing out the pickle juice. It just feels wasteful. So lately, I've been dipping my fingers in the pickle juice, and I flick it on my sandwiches for flavor. Like that. Now, I need a few more flicks right there. How many flicks does it take to properly flavor a ham sandwich? Between like seven and 11, depending on how big your fingers are and how long you leave them immersed in the pickle juice. There's lots of variables, I studied this. I get home one day, all the pickle juice is gone. I asked my roommate. I know I said I live alone earlier. But I like to establish different realities for every joke. It's more fun that way. It's easier to work. So I asked my roommate, dude, what happened to the pickle juice? He said, I threw it away. It's just pickle juice. I said, it's not just pickle juice. I flicked that on my sandwiches for flavor. I was like, dude, you know I got to hurt one of your lizards now. He got like seven lizards. It's way too many lizards. They don't do shit. They've never been on Animal Planet. They're not even famous lizards. They're just random lizards. And they chill in my apartment all day. They have lights on them all the time. And they don't put shit on the bills. Who are these lizards getting free lights in my house? I pay for my lights. I'll fry one of these lizards and have a lizard sandwich and flick pickle juice on it. I was downtown, you had these kids, they come up to you. Hey, sir, can you help out my basketball team? Can you buy some candy for my basketball team? Can you buy this for my basketball team? You buy this poem for my basketball team? I'm like, dude, I don't really think you got a basketball team. And if you do have a basketball team, that shit is doing bad. You need to get some sponsorship or like some free Nikes or like a liberal white girl from Minnesota that's compassionate. Like, I'm gonna help these kids. These kids have been through so much. They've had so much trouble in their lives. Just have so many trials and tribulations. Hey, can you have tribulations by themselves? Or do they always have to be with trials? You never hear anybody like, man, I've been having tribulations. What about your trials? You're supposed to have trials with your tribulations. Nah, just tribulations, man. It's been tribulating a lot. And history is weird. Nobody ever just pillages. They always rape with the pillaging. Man, these guys that came through and they pillaged our village. Man, that's messed up, man. If they rape your women too? No, but my hut is fucked up. <laughs> they stole everything, all the bamboo. That's a weird combination of activities, raping and pillaging. How did they get to that? Here's my very flawed theory on it. I think initially they just wanted to rape and rape. That's my thoughts, but they were like, guys, we gotta think of something else. We already established the fact that we're raping. We gotta think of something else just to give the phrase more flavor and that be redundant. And so somebody was like, we should rape and pillage. And everybody was like, what's pillaging? And he was like, I don't know. I thought we were focusing on the rape. <laughs> so they continued raping and pillaging for some years and then they had a meeting. They said, guys, we can't say raping and pillaging anymore. Rape looks bad in the newspapers. The media is killing us. We got to think of something else to say for when we send out the press releases. And they're like, we should say pillage and plundering. And they were like, what's plundering? He was like, I don't know. I thought we were going to focus on the rape. Anyways, I got off the subject. So I bought some candy from this kid. I handed him a $10 bill. He held my $10 bill up to the light to check and see if it's counterfeit. Like, what are you gonna do if it is counterfeit? You like 11. I'm a grown man, I'll punch you in the chest and take the rest of your candy. Give me all the gummy bears, you little fuck. I like green apple. This ain't a basketball game, this is real life. One point for Hannibal. I had to get my teeth cleaned. I don't have health insurance. I went to this college in Brooklyn where you pay $10 for a 19-year-old to fuck around in your mouth. <laughs> she did not know what she was doing at all. She was just hurting me and making it uncomfortable. 
She had the real dentist supervisor. Should I hurt him like this? <laughs> no, you should hurt him like this. Put him in the ultimate pain. If you want to put him in ultimate pain, he's only in medium pain. My gum started bleeding because that's what things do when they're attacked viciously. <laughs> she tried to give me some advice. She said, you know, when your gums bleed, that's not a good thing. <laughs> oh, for real? I thought that meant prosperity and good fortune. I thought that meant everything good in life was gonna happen to me forever and ever. I'll tell a story. In 2005, all of a sudden, my balls started hurting. Really bad. I had this awful pain in my balls. I didn't know where it came from. It just came out of nowhere and it was kicking it. I was like, pain, you need to leave. Right now, get, get out of my balls. And Payne was like, no, I'm going to kick it for a while. This is comfortable. Give me a blanket and a toothbrush. I'm spending the night. And I was like, no, you aren't, Payne. I got some ice. I put ice on Payne. I said, Ice, can you get Payne out of here? And Ice was like, I'll see what I can do. And I put ice on the Payne. And Payne was like, that's not going to work, Ice. You need to get something better. It, felt, it was horrible. It felt like somebody was using my balls as a boxing speed bag. You know how the boxes be like... <laughs> boom! They always do that big punch at the end, like, pow! Like, look how good I am at hitting shit that doesn't move. <laughs> so, I had to go to the ER and get it checked out. It was horrible. I said, Doc, what's going on? He said, Hannibal, you have testicular torsion. That means that your left nut isn't getting any oxygen. If we don't do surgery tonight, your left nut might die. I said, first of all, doctor, I say nut, you say testicle, be a goddamn professional here. <laughs> Secondly, how do I deal with a situation like that? When you're a teenager, there's pamphlets, don't deal with peer pressure, don't drink, don't do drugs, but there's no pamphlet or seminar on what to do when your left nut might die on a random Tuesday <laughs> in December. I have to get the surgery because I'm not trying to do the Lance Armstrong stuff for the rest of my life. I need both of mine so I can put my balls on girls' bangs. <laughs> Ball on bangs just doesn't sound right, so... First was the ultrasound. This girl was like, oh, take a few pictures. Take some pictures. She was taking pictures for like 15 minutes. Well, how many angles do you need? This ain't a GQ photo shoot. This is, this is my life we're talking about. And so I was like, can I see some of the pictures? I wanted to see some of the pictures, see the work she's doing. She was like, no, you can't see any of the pictures. It's like, well, I can't see pictures of my own balls. What is the world coming to? I didn't sign a release form or anything, and you don't own the rights to these images. <laughs> the next stop was anesthesia. They gave me that. It's very strong. It's so strong. They give it to you, and somebody can go inside of your ball sack, and you won't even wake up. <laughs> you won't even stir a little bit, like, hey, what y'all guys doing? Uh, what the fuck? They just did the surgery while I was asleep. And I woke up, I was wearing whatever very small sumo wrestlers would wear. Like I had an Asian wrestling thong on. Like if there was a super light heavyweight division, I was wearing whatever they were. They put me in that. I wouldn't have proved of that if I wasn't drugged up. I was like, what is this? They trimmed me up. That was, that looked, it looked better, trimmed up. That was... Put a lot of gauze on it, gave me some Vicodin. You know how much it costs to get that? $17,000, that's how much it costs to get testicular torsion fixed. So now, when a girl is licking my balls, I'm like, yo, you know you got $17,000 in your mouth right now. <laughs> that's the only way to end that story. <laughs> I don't have any kids, because I wear condoms most of the time. Nobody wears condoms all the time. Society was built on unprotected sex. 
That's why we all here because of that institution. <laughs> but I do have a theory about lifestyles condoms. I think lifestyles condoms are working together with the people that make the morning after pill. Because <laughs> lifestyles condoms always break, then you have to take it to get the morning after pill. I'm like, yo, this is not the lifestyle I'm trying to live. <laughs> this is not the lifestyle I want in Walgreens at nine in the morning with a chick I don't even like that much. This is not the life. <laughs> It's not ideal. They owe me like 45 bucks times three. Those things are effective. I call them zygote killers. <laughs> zygote killers, keeping babies out of my life and allowing me the free time and disposable income to pursue my dreams. <laughs> zygote killers. I got a laptop. I thought when I bought it, I was going to start writing great scripts and screenplays, but I just been going to youporn.com. <laughs> All the time. You porn is a great site, except that they let people comment on the porn, and that's totally unnecessary. <laughs> people leave weird comments. Yeah, that chick, I want to bone her, and I shit on her chest, and lick it off. <laughs> Who's with me? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's with you licking shit. That's a disgusting activity. I think you need to be alone in your shit eating endeavors. Don't try to bring me or the rest of the you porn community into your nonsense, I speak for the whole you porn community. And then anytime there's an interracial scene on that, black guy and a white woman was always racist comments, but Lord, like, man, these niggas are fucking our white women. What's up with that? <laughs> fucking niggas. What's going on with that? Like, dude, are you seriously being racist and masturbating at the same time? <laughs> like, that's what you're doing? Like, man, niggas, I hate them so much. Oh, my God. But I can't look away from this scene, man. This couple has amazing on-camera chemistry. It's great how well they work together. It's magnetic. Lose all those videos have descriptions. You know what you're about to see before you click on it. It said, black dude bones, 18-year-old white chick. And this guy still clicked on it because his horniness trumped his racism. I saw an ad on a bus, the ad said, syphilis is back. <laughs> that is a real ad. Syphilis is back, because apparently syphilis went on vacation for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so exhausted being an STD these days, man. I'm tired, I gotta take a little vacay for a little bit. Man, it's exhausting ruining people's lives. <laughs> Before he left, he called up herpes to cover for him. <laughs> hey, herpes, what's going on? It's syphilis, how you doing, man? Good to hear, good to hear. Oh, you know me, same old, same old. Just burning people and destroying lives. Same thing. Same shit, different day. Hey, can you cover me for like two weeks? Yeah, I'm going to this STD convention in the Bahamas. They didn't invite you? That's really fucked up. Yeah, it's awesome. They cover travel, hotel. I get a per diem. It's great. But don't worry. I'm going to be back, though. Yeah, I got this huge ad campaign coming up and everything. <laughs> Simmons has marketing meetings where he's yelling at people, hey Debbie, hey Debbie, what the fuck happens with my four page ad in the paper, huh? I thought that was gonna be in the paper on Tuesday. Hey Mark, Mark, why am I doing shitty in the 18 to 34 demographic right now? You know that's our target market, 18 to 34. You're really slipping up, we are gonna let you go, Mark. Well, syphilis, it's just that people aren't feeling you anymore. <laughs> what? People not feeling me, huh? I kill Al Capone. <laughs> that joke is way more hilarious than y'all gave it. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because Al Capone died of syphilis. And because I personified syphilis for 37 seconds. <laughs> That was exciting to me. I have weird aspirations, like I really want to kick a pigeon. Because pigeons walk around like they're untouchable. I'm like, you're not untouchable. I'll kick the shit out of you. You're not waiting for the bus because you can fly. But I can't kick pigeons because there's always people around. If I kick one, 
some lady a seat. Like, oh my gosh, that guy just kicked a pigeon in broad daylight. And she goes and tells her husband, honey, I saw this guy kick a pigeon in broad daylight. Her husband tells his boss, my wife said this guy kicked a pigeon in broad daylight. His boss knows somebody at the paper. They say, you know, front page of the Tribune, black dudes are kicking pigeons. There's been a flurry of pigeon kicking going on in the black community. Must be stopped at once. Save the pigeons. Must stop these PKBPs, pigeon kicking black people. Save the pigeons. Acronyms are always hilarious. I don't know why I want to kick a pigeon. I just figure to make my day better. Somehow I kick a pigeon in the morning, something bad happens that evening. I'm like, you know what, that happened. But I kicked a pigeon earlier, and she was relaxing and invigorating. It's impossible to kick a pigeon, they're too quick. I tried different strategies. I tried to like side swipe kick a pigeon and shit. I tried to punt one. I set up cardboard and act like I'm a break dancer, street performer. And try to hit him with like a... But they don't buy that. They know all the gimmicks. It's, that's why I want to have the pigeon kicking Olympics. Where you get judged by the distance that you kick the pigeon, the number of fellas you kick off the pigeon, and the octave of the squawk. When you kick the pigeon like a high pitch, like, ooh, that's a gold medal. You kick the shit out of that pigeon, you're a goddamn warrior. You deserve your own statue in the park, like, yeah. I had nephews and nieces. My nephews, they all right. My nephew's always crying. I don't understand why he's crying. I'm like, dude, why are you crying? Your life is great. All you do is eat applesauce and take shits, and that's your day. They're like, Hannibal, he's crying because he's sleepy. Why don't he just go to sleep then? Because that's what I do when I'm sleepy. I just go to sleep. I don't stay woke. Like, I'm so sleepy. I'm so sleepy and exhausted. I'm so sleepy. Dude, just go to sleep, man. You waste the time you can be spending sleeping when you're crying. Just be a more practical baby. This baby's really shitty at time management. My niece made me feel dumb one day. She's like four. She was coloring. I was trying to connect with her on like a coloring level. So I was like, hey, Peyton, check this out. This is red crayon, it's blue. You put these together and make purple. And I thought she would like be excited about that. And then she was like, she just grabbed in the box. She was like, I have purple crayon right here. <laughs> I felt dumb as hell. Just got sunned by a three-year-old. One time I'm chilling out with my nephew watching TV. I got him on my lap. He starts grunting. I'm like, why is he grunting? And I realized he's taking a shit in my lap. And that's so disrespectful. You don't take a shit in another human's lap, no matter what age you are. It's not cool behavior. I don't condone that at all. I don't know what the other human's been teaching you, but that ain't cool. He's a baby. Well, you know what? I never see one-year-old chipmunks taking a shit in their chipmunk uncle's lap. That's not happening. That's not going down on Meerkat Manor. Why is he doing that to me? Not only did he disrespect my right pant leg, but at the same time, he's grabbed the neck of my shirt for leverage. Like, Aah. like, sis, you couldn't squirm to the floor to do that? You just destroyed a whole outfit. Another time, I'm chilling out with my nephew, trying to check my email. My nephew keeps touching at the keyboard. I push his hand away, he keeps touching at the keyboard. I, push his hand away. I got frustrated. I couldn't believe I said this to a one-year-old. I was like, Nigga, you can't type. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, it's pretty messed up to say to anybody, <laughs> let alone a one-year-old. I felt so bad. I was hoping he wasn't scarred for life. He remembers that. Thanksgiving, he's 16 years old. He drugs my food. I wake up, he's cut my hands off. He's staring me in the eyes like, nah, nigga. You can't type. <laughs> I'd be like, whatever, dude. I got these metal arms right over here. 
Thanks a lot, Lakeshore. Later. Thank you. Keep it going for Hannibal Burris. You hear that?